Many Banthas died during the recording of this episode. Book of Boba Fett. Uh, tears are being shed for these Banthas. All right, so episode two of the Book of Boba Fett. Literally just finished watching it about five minutes ago, maybe less than that. And I got to say, this was a great episode. I loved this episode. I'm talking like, you know, when it comes to Star Wars, I said it before and I'll say it again. I'm never overly optimistic about the next project that's coming out because of some of the things that have been done to Star Wars ever since Disney got their hands on it. But I got to tell you, the shows in terms of The Mandalorian and now The Book of Boba Fett always, you know, make me feel a little bit better about watching anything Star Wars related. Now, this episode was so good for me personally. And, you know, I don't know how you guys felt about it. But one of the things I mentioned in my last review was I love that we can go back to these very uh, these these characters and, and some of these races that we see within the Star Wars universe that we never really get to know, you know, and the Tusken Raiders. I mean, I never thought. I'd be a big fan of Tusken Raider lore. I never thought I'd wanted to see more of what the Tusken Raiders are about, their pecking order, their way of life, how did it start, things like that. And this episode, while we did get some of the Boba Fett current events, and we see now that there are going to be more huts, thank you guys for the last review in the comment section for letting me know that Hut is actually the race, not part of their name. And we see that Jabba's family, uh, the twins, are coming to claim his throne, and I'm looking forward to seeing how that's going to play out. I'm very happy to see more hut races in Star Wars, but the real meat and potatoes of this episode is Boba Fett's past, and I said in my last review, I hope we get to see more of that. Not only did we get more of that in this episode, it was the majority of the episode, and Everything from from the the raid on the train, everything from it's just so good. And again, the whole ceremony with the Tuscan Raiders and and everything that involved Boba Fett, kind of like working his way up, learning how to fight. That one Tuscan Raider in all black that's been training Boba Fett how to use that staff. He is such a badass. Did you ever think you'd say? Oh my God, a Tusken Raider is such a badass. I mean, literally, that Tusken Raider is awesome. And we get to see Boba, how he kind of works his way into the into the, uh, the the livelihood of being a Tusken Raider. And also, not only that, but also teaching them how to use certain technology that they're, most of the time, they just kind of break apart. Man, I tell you, everything from the raid on the train, the the ceremony, the the uh, kind of like the uh, the uh, uh, coming like looking for the term. There's a term used when rite of passage. That's the one I was looking for. The rite of passage, him essentially becoming a Tuscan Raider, the ceremonial dance. Everything was just absolutely phenomenal, and. It was a little weird, a little trippy in the episode when he gets the gift from the elder and <laughs> a little little lizard goes up his nose, but it guides him. And he thinks he's actually dreaming this, but it's actually the the lizard and, and that's in his brain kind of guiding him. And he finds his weapon. And you knew from the moment he bought that branch back to the camp, they were going to craft his weapon. And that was dope. They, I love how the guy started off crafting it and he kind of shows... Boba how to do it. So Boba ends up crafting his own staff. He gets his approval from his teacher. I mean, these are things about Star Wars that I that I'm starting to love more now. Going into the more the things that were I don't want to say blown off, but just things that are not have anything to do with Jedi or anything to do with lightsabers. I mean, this is more like on the 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 more ambiguous parts of Star Wars that we're starting to see grow. And I love it. I'm eating this up. This this episode, I don't know what to expect from the next episode coming. But I got to say, if this ends up being my favorite episode of the whole season, it wouldn't surprise me. Because I was literally so into this. And I, learning the about the tribe, you know, seeing seeing how they work how they trained him, how they accepted him into them, and, and their pecking order, how they do things. The lore regarding the Tusken Raiders, I, I never thought I'd say this. I, I, it's one of the one of the 
the the best things for me right now current star wars honestly i know it sounds weird i know there's a lot of people that are jedi fans and you know they want to see lightsabers and boba fett's back and but this right here for me this for me personally is just absolutely phenomenal this is great storytelling this is great lore building and again i've never read the books I've never read the book, so I don't know if if the Tusken Raiders have ever had this kind of attention in the books. Maybe they have, but unfortunately, I've never read them. So this, for me, is a big deal. Now, this episode, again, we get to see some current events regarding Boba. He goes and he visits the mayor and, you know, kind of confronts him about the mayor sending him to sending actually assassins to kill him. He gets this information from the assassin that he saved, that, that he had Fennec bring back. And the guy wasn't going to talk, and they put him in the Rancor pit. And I'm like over here, I'm like, oh my god, the Rancor. But turns out the Rancor is not there, obviously, because he's dead. Obviously, we know that Luke killed him in Return of the Jedi. But the assassin didn't know that, and the assassin thought he was going to get eaten. And before uh, he could even get an idea that the Rancor wasn't there, uh, he spilled the beans. They got the information, and then Boba goes and confronts. But he learns, interesting tidbit here. He tells basically, uh, the mayor tells Boba to go back to uh, a certain location, basically back to the bar. And he finds out that the twins, which I believe were related to Jabba the Hutt, are coming to claim his throne. And he confronts them. And you get like, look, you got two huts sitting on this big platform being carried by, it looks like, 18 guys. I don't even know if 18 is enough. In fact, there was one guy in the front kind of struggling. And then you see this, I believe, is a Wookiee, and this Wookiee looks badass. I mean, he appears to be a Wookiee. I'm not 100% sure he is, but he appears to be a Wookiee, and looks like he's their right-hand killer, maybe their bounty hunter, whatever the case may be, but obviously he's working for the Huts, and he mean mugs Boba and Fennec, and nothing transpires, nothing goes down, but you can see things are going to go down. They want their claim Boba's like, "Uh uh-uh, belongs to me, sorry. But beyond that, after that, everything is what's going on in the past, how Boba became essentially a Tusken Raider, I I believe. They they clothed him, they gave him a weapon, and then they did a ceremony, I guess, celebrating their new member. And there's a lot of respect there. It's amazing how Boba, even going into this as a slave to the Tusken Raiders, probably viewed them as wild animals crazy people and as he kind of learned and and kind of saw that there is a pecking order to these people there is some sort of civility to them but it's very deep it's it's a it's a culture that people outside of their world will never understand will never have any knowledge of and it's kind of like boba gets the in you know what i mean he earns their respect by doing certain things for one saving the child in the last episode and then they finally decide to start teaching him. They they figure out that Boba, there's more to him than just being a slave. And it's amazing the how things built, how those relations, how that relationship between Boba and the Tusken Raiders and the Elder, how it's been presented, how it's been built up. The trust has been developed. He has proven himself to be trustworthy, and they have accepted him for the things that he has done for them, uh, saving the child teaching them technology how to drive speed uh speeders helping them deal with a constant threat of the train that drives by uh every so often and kills their band like freaking banthas man those poor banthas it's just standing there it's so funny you see them standing there and then boom they get hit with a laser and they just tip over they, they have no chance i i kind of laughed at those parts where the banthas are getting killed because they're just standing there my dog's coming over she so every time i do a video she's got to come over and get the attention um she doesn't like not having the attention she likes to have attention right girl isn't that right? Yeah, there she goes. She's under my desk. She just wants me to rub her back. So, yeah, the poor Banthas is just getting slaughtered. But it's, you know, this is something you obviously know that the Tusken Raiders have to deal with on a regular basis. And finally, here comes Boba Fett basically teaching them how to drive speeders and telling them, we'll get them. So um, Boba goes to a bar <laughs> where he kind of confronts uh, a couple of thugs, beats them all up. And takes their speeders and gifts it to the Elder. And right as he does that, the Tusken Raiders start to break down the speeder. He's just like, no, 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 no. He's like, I'm going to teach you. And then once you learn, we're going to go after the train. And that train sequence was absolutely phenomenal. 
it was a great, great scene. It was action packed and it was a little tense. It was, you know, it was a lot of sacrifice to, to get that train. But the star of that sequence is the Tuscan Raider all in black. I, I don't know if there's a name for him, whatever, but you, you guys know which one I'm talking about. He's the badass. And again, you never thought, I never thought I would look at a Tuscan Raider and say, that's a badass character right there. I like that guy. And he went in there and he did work. And it was a great, great scene. And obviously, there were a lot of rewards that came from that raid. They got water, they got supplies, weapons. And Boba Fett set it up so that every time the train comes through, they have to pay a fee or a toll to the Tusken Raiders. Oh, here we go. See this? She comes She comes over here. Come on, tip, tip your head up so you can see the camera. She's. I'm talking, so she wants to come and play now. She's like, oh, it's time to play. Daddy's, Daddy's recording video, so I got to go interrupt. So, <laughs> um, but it, look, man, this episode was great. This was a fantastic episode. I loved every second of it. Uh, again, I did not think going into this that I would be into the show. I didn't know what to expect. I thought the first episode was solid, but this episode put me on a whole nother level of excitement for the rest of the season because, you know, I, I kind of feel like even if we get to episodes where we're not going to see the past of Boba Fett anymore, because eventually it's going to catch up to the current events. I kind of feel like the Tusken Raiders and <laughs> she's being consistent. She's being persistent. I kind of feel like the Tusken Raiders and everything he learned from them is going to play a big role in the coming events. And it wouldn't surprise me if he if he goes back to them and he kind of incorporates them into his way of life. You can kind of see now what he learned from the Tusken Raiders. He's applying to his way of ruling respect and respect. You can see is a big deal in the Tusken Raider culture and their, and, and the way their way of life. So <laughs> she's stubborn. Why are you being a stubborn girl? You know, what I'm trying to do here. So I thought it was a phenomenal episode. I'm, I'm kind of excited to see what you guys think in the comment section, but this was really, really good. I enjoyed it a great deal and I'm looking forward to the next episode. Um, yeah, man, I'm, I'm very surprised, pleasantly surprised, but very surprised that at how much I'm enjoying this this uh, show because uh, I didn't expect it to be as good as it was. Um, but so far, it's it's great. And from episode one to episode two, which is such a pain in the butt, from episode one to episode two, it's only gotten better. So uh, I'm looking for, and now the huts are, there, or huts are there, so I'm looking forward to that too. So anyway, let me know in the comment section what, what you guys thought of the episode while I struggle and fight here with my dog who wants attention right now because I'm recording videos. And uh, I'm looking forward to the next episode, and I will see you guys on the next video. This is Rob signing off for ETN, where we don't do news, we just talk entertainment. Take it easy. Wah!